It's time. The Prime Minister wants to make it perfectly clear it was the ABC, not the government, that axed the glass house. God bless him for doing so. <laughs> Welcome to The Glass House, the program that asks the question, seeing this as the last episode, do you want me to clean your windscreen? <laughs> Tonight we're reasonably proud to present the 2006 Awards for Excellence, and what an excellent year it's been. Eddie Maguire took the top job at Channel 9 and proceeded to sack so many people, it looked like being the only job at Channel 9. <laughs> Dick Cheney shot his friend in the face, and White House observers got to draw fun parallels with Clinton and Lewinsky. <laughs> Our beloved leader also celebrated 10 years as Prime Minister by getting a lap dance from Jeanette dressed as Bradman. <laughs> Politics became an Aussie values pissing contest and disturbingly, Amanda Vanstone kept winning. <laughs> We asked, where the bloody hell are you? And David Hicks replied, I don't know, but it's cold and Philip Ruddock won't turn the lights off. <laughs> Mel Gibson made no friends, except for Kramer. <laughs> Nicole and Keith had a wedding, then Keith sobered up and said, I married who? <laughs> Tom Cruise spent the year jumping on the couch, confirmed, and jumping on Katie Holmes, unconfirmed. <laughs> The police report into the Cronulla riots found the media helped incite them. They also found the Pope's Catholic bears shit in the woods <laughs> and dogs' balls really do stick out. <laughs> and politicians called for the axing of Big Brother but denied calling for the axing of the glass house. <laughs> Turns out you can turkey slap on national television as long as the turkey's not a member of parliament. <laughs> Excellent medical news, William James Anderson. <laughs> Scientists in the US are developing smart underwear that monitors your heart rate and other vital signs and sounds an alarm if there's a health crisis. But this isn't new. I've always had something in my underwear that's alarming. <laughs> if you think about it, that's quite frightening. <laughs> you can even have novelty alarms, like someone screaming, Oh my God, he's dying! Or... <laughs> I'm on play school now. <laughs> Within 15 years, the technology will be so advanced, the underwear will be able to apply CPR to heart attack victims. As long as they're wearing really high undies. <laughs> <laughs> they're also working on inserts for shoes that could stop old people falling over, or as we call them, nails. <laughs> But they're waiting until Bush leaves office before they make the smart undies available. The last thing the US needs is other leaders finding out they can have a more intelligent conversation with the president's wife, France. I tell you what, oh. I'm angry this week. Oh. I'm all dressed up and I've got nowhere to go. <laughs> Seriously, I'm angry. Oh, I'm angry because Ian Thorpe, swimming legend, is going to stop swimming at the age of 24, but John Howard's going to power walk till he's 150. <laughs> God, why is it so? <laughs> it's just not fair. And also, but I mean, our opposition's no better. Kim Beasley last week thought that bloody, that George Bush's top political advisor, Carl Rove, Host the variety show on Channel 10. 
You probably thought all the US foreign policy decisions over the last six years has just been wacky what this? <laughs> Crazy! It makes me angry. They say that Kim was just forgetful. I mean, that probably explains his weight. Obviously, he forgets that he's had lunch a lot, doesn't he? <laughs> so he has it again. Oh. Tell you what, this Australian Idol made me angry as oh, well. No, no. The winner said, oh, I can't believe I've won either. Can I? Because you're bloody Irish! <laughs> it's not bloody, bloody backpacker Idol, is it? <laughs> What else makes me angry? I'm getting married in a few weeks. Oh, hang on, no, not that. No, no. <laughs> no what makes me angry is that next year I've got nowhere to get bloody angry. I'm going to be one of those guys walking down the street just being angry at himself. I'll be on bloody ABC. Got any money for some heroin? <laughs> Corinne and Dave to throw some stones in the glass house tonight. Our first two guests in this light entertainment extravaganza. Merv Hughes! <laughs> and Liz Ellis! Movers and shakers, first up, some of the world's greatest sporting stars. Thanks to relentless schedules and long overseas tours, players are homesick, stressed and brain fried. Of course, what happens on tour stays on tour, as long as you've packed the right ointment. <laughs> the latest victim of international sport is Ian Thorpe. Thorpedo, the super duper fish. People were shocked when he retired, but Thorpe, he said, clarifying his priorities was like looking in a mirror. All he had to do was ask, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the biggest Kylie fan of all? <laughs> Cricketers are suffering too. England batsman Marcus Treskothic went home before the Ashes started and Shane Warne's been tearing his hair out for years. But in Warney's defence, he's just really dedicated. Even when he's not working, he's always at the crease. <laughs> You're the most valuable player. Is too much sport sucking the stars dry? Depends on, I guess, how long you, you go on tour for. Merv clearly went on tour long enough to grow hair on his face. I've never been on tour that long, so... <laughs> Although I have perhaps been, played against players who have got, you know, enough hair on their face. Actually, I think some of the Australian oh. women's cricketers too would have hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice no, we go back a long way and, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're going to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right. So, yeah. Too. yeah, fair enough too. Merv, yes. do you have to shave your mower for Movember? No, silly question. Oh. <laughs> and that's amazing how many people ask me you're going to shave it off for Movember and you just think, what a stupid question. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm glad I asked it there. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly, <laughs> particularly on television. Although, <laughs> I, I, yeah. The last episode's turned into Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, because you do it seriously, yeah, not just for charity. No, yeah. that's right. I'm a firm believer charity starts at home. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh, I'm being serious. <laughs> how, did so, you, how did you know when to retire? Um, very easy. I suppose it's uh, one of those things that as an elite athlete you do know. Um, I knew to the exact, exact second, yeah. I reckon. Uh, Bob Simpson, who was coach and selector, tapped me on the shoulder and said it's time to retire. <laughs> The comedians tour a lot as well, and I, I did, you know, I did the whole Edinburgh Festival this year, and then I went to Ireland, and I was in Ireland completely on my own, and that was a little bit lonely and a little bit homesick. But you know, unlike Shane Warne, I didn't find a need to then root every blonde I came across. <laughs> I just don't understand. I just drank a lot of Guinness. Yeah, well, well no, see, we can't do that. Like, I love touring because it's great fun to get away from, like, uh, a your home. husband. <laughs> away from him. <laughs> I, I want to get away from him so much I've become a world-class athlete. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're I, used to, I couldn't run a few years ago and then I got married. I you're never, you're what never going to retire. Training? Right? My husband bores me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, Matthew. I love you. I love you. 
I mean, but people keep but. saying, but, but people. <laughs> <laughs> But I often get asked when I'm going to retire because I'm ancient and um, <laughs> and the answer to that is like there's never a good time to retire but I don't want to retire because I don't want to get a job or have a family because mm. they're two things that just seem to me really appalling. So what? I'd rather what? keep playing. There's, there's a good, but here's a good time to retire when you're ready. No one else can tell you when it's time to retire. Well, Except Bob Simpson, Simpson told you. Yeah. Yeah. In hindsight, <laughs> but in hindsight, I probably wasn't good enough yeah. to make that decision. Yeah. So he made the right decision. So yeah. Where Liz, where Liz is yeah. like yeah. just the it. top, top of the tree. And if I've got Bob Simpson tapping me on the shoulder from behind, I might retire. <laughs> good oh, you might be having a good time on tour. <laughs> <laughs> with, with Thorpey. Yeah, what about Thorpey? With Thorpey, 20, 23, 24 yeah. year old. Yeah. Okay, and a lot of people say, why did he retire? So he's been doing it since he's, what, 15? 15? Yeah. He broke he's a been... world record when he yeah. was 15. Yeah. So when I was 15, been... I couldn't scratch my ass without detailed <laughs> instructions from my mother. <laughs> but eight, eight, nine years. Yeah. So, how many times does he have to yeah. climb the same mountain? And do you think he earned enough money that he can buy himself a boat, possibly, you know? So. <laughs> I think he's Absolutely no, no problem with Thorpe retiring. I don't think anyone does. All no. the press has been really supportive. But I th what I can't... He went... I think he did an interview in LA somewhere where he said that he... He, want, you know, he found that the Australians picked on him and that he wasn't loved as much as he wanted to be loved. And you think, geez, we, like, we did our best, but you were the one who wore a pearl necklace <laughs> and you were the one that brought out a perfume called Ian Thorpe for men. <laughs> what were we supposed to do? <laughs> It's a, it's a thing about Australians, like, I, I, with Thorpey, I suppose, he's that wound up, he's that good, and everyone just starts to take it for granted. And as soon as he's retired, everyone sits back, shit, how good to yeah. We're going to miss him. It's like when they act oh, yeah, the glass house, like really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of a Ladies and gentlemen, to present our first award tonight, Liz Ellis and Merv. Yeah! I'm not used to talking in snow. <laughs> Representing the award tonight for outstanding excellence in sport. And the nominees are... Italy's World Cup wussy, Marco Materazzi, for provoking Zinedine Zidane into that famous headbutt when Zinni offered to give the Italian his shirt. Marky Mark replied, I'd prefer your sister. Mike Tyson, <laughs> who's raising money for charity with his World Boxing Tour. And Mike says future stops on the tour might include bouts with women. <laughs> <laughs> Cherie Murphy, wife of Aussie football star Harry Kuehl. Cherie says before Harry goes into hospital, he constantly wants sex because he thinks he can wear out his groin if it's about to be fixed. It's exhausting. <laughs> and the talking Boonie dolls. The mother-in-law of one of Boonie's mates wanted to sell their beach house because it was haunted. Someone kept asking her to go to the fridge and get him a beer, but she couldn't find anyone in the house. <laughs> and Merv, the excellent winner is... The Booney Doll. <laughs> Sadly, the doll can't be here tonight, so to accept the award, Reese Muldoon. Um, obviously, um, the Booney Doll's very excited to receive this award. Uh, couldn't be here in person, but I have. Um, Received a, a letter which the Booney Doll has asked me to um, <laughs> to read out. <clears throat> Dear Barbie, <laughs> you say that we don't talk anymore. <laughs> that when I do talk, it's inappropriate. <laughs> you say I spend more time on the couch watching cricket with my mates than with you. What a joke. Every time I call out for a beer, where are you? <laughs> and no, I did not call you a stuck-up mole. What I said was, nachos. I like nachos. <laughs> you seem to hear what you want to hear. You're always saying you want me to open up, to talk more. I'll talk when I'm ready. <laughs> Speaking of opening up,
when we make love, why won't you let me in? <laughs> Signed, The Boonie Doll. And there's a P.S. Sorry to hear you lost your leg in that gold digging accident. <laughs> Later in the glass house, someone dials the Big Pond support line and gets straight through. And today you saw a first in the world with Telstra. Kim Beasley really hopes the ALP gets its bond back from Parliament House. Right, we'll be out in another month or so. And John Howard reveals every single thing he knows about global warming. You know, uh, it gets warm. <laughs> Joining us at the see-through desk, Reese Muldoon and Adam Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> Next mover and shaker is New Scientist magazine, which has celebrated its golden anniversary by asking the world's greatest boffins to predict the breakthroughs of the next 50 years. And the ideas are very exciting. There'll be devices to interpret the emotions of animals as diverse as monkeys and fish. Who knows, maybe stingrays will apologise. <laughs> To wipe out racism, all races will be genetically combined, so the only legitimate reason you can have for hating someone is if they're a total knob. <laughs> and due to advances in genetics, some people actually will be. <laughs> but the most likely prediction for the next half a century is a really pissed off 99-year-old Peter Costello. <laughs> <laughs> You're the boffin's boffin. What would you like to see in the next 50 years? It is amazing. Think about 50 years from now. It's like if you were in 1956 yeah. trying to predict today. Sure. So back in 1956, computers were three stories high in buildings. The phrase, there's a bug in the computer, yeah. actually becomes, of course, in the old ENIAC computer, which was three stories high, sure. one day a bug actually got into one of the valves in the computer. It was a moth. That? I did not know that. It is. So you could easily have the phrase these days, there's a rat in the system, or yeah. I've, I've got a small kitten in my network, or something like that. <laughs> so you never, you never would have picked PC. All this stuff. The one I really hope is, I hope that 50 years from now we've learned enough about the genetic code that people don't just get dealt the short card, sorry, you're going to die of cancer at a horribly early age. That's yeah. why I, I hope we really crack cancer. That'll be the one I want, which is why I'm growing this beautiful thing for Movember. A big hello to all my Mo bros and sisters in Sydney tonight at Luna Park. I went to the, I went to the launch last year, the, yeah. big, the big final, sure. where everyone turns up. 7,000 guys with their mates and girlfriends turn up to Luna Park with these moustaches. It's like you'd fallen asleep and woken up on the set of the biggest 1970s porn film <laughs> ever made. It was just great. What, what I love is you've got that great combination of maths and porn. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, hey, baby, how many times does me go into you? Waka, waka, wow, exactly. wow. I'm the bad <laughs> professor. How does your wife feel about your mo? I, I, well, I, I'm, I created this in a three-stage process. Stage yeah. one was grow a normal beard. Uh -huh. Yeah. Stage three was hack in with a set of clippers there, there and there. Stage two was move all of my stuff into the spare room <laughs> as my wife screamed, I'm not having sex with Chewbacca. So... <laughs> Well, I want to know, we have been predicting, I think, for about 100 years now, yeah. flying cars. Where are the flying cars? Because oh, always the thing, too, was the jetpack to school. Mm. When yes. I was going, it was always the jetpack. You just, you know. Yep. That's just good. Jetpacks, flying cars and, and aluminium hats. Yeah. I mean, Some people that take a lot of speed still wear the aluminium hat. <laughs> You know, block out the signals. Talk about and... drugs. Why can't we invent a drug that makes you ecstatically happy with no side effects? Come on. Get to it, chemists. <laughs> Seriously. Why do they always have to have side effects that are bad so you don't want to take them, you know? Surely we can do it. Dream it. It can happen. <laughs> Obviously, we know what Dave's doing after the show. He's starting his own ice lab. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, is a drug that you bloody it gives you an ecstatic high, followed by three days of chronic depression. You know, the, you know the single best thing about being an ice addict. Yeah. It's only two sleeps till Christmas. Or <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like, be like getting the Concorde to New Zealand. You know, I mean, the trip's good, but you end up in a bad place. <laughs> To 
present the next award, Adam Spencer and Reese Waldo. <laughs> The nominees for Outstanding Excellence in Science are... Boffins from Manchester Metropolitan University who found mice really don't like cheese. <laughs> the Dutch company which has developed a condom to protect your mobile phone from water and other substances. <laughs> it can be used as a regular condom too. <laughs> IVF experts in Israel who've doubled pregnancy rates by implanting the embryo, then entertaining parents with a clown. <laughs> and Clinton Cossey for this. And the most excellent winner is... <coughs> the Mighty Moto Counts! <laughs> Clinton is currently turning his beanbag into a hovercraft, so to accept the award, Arj Barker! <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Watching that footage, it's clear that couches have come a long way. <laughs> I lost my virginity on a couch. And then a couple years later, I found it. It had fallen in the crack behind the cushion. Sadly, Clinton Cossey, the creator of the Moto Couch, couldn't be here tonight because he was in a terrible head-on collusion with a lazy boy <laughs> while trying to overtake a slow-moving coffee table. <laughs> Thankfully, no one was killed, but he did sustain carpet burns on 90% of his body. <laughs> and also, even worse, he knocked the bong over. <laughs> uh, I'll never forget the first time I got the keys to the family couch. <laughs> Picked up my girl and headed up to Lookout Point. And right when we started to make out, it started pissing rain. We got drenched! <laughs> Fortunately, it was my grandmother's couch, so it was covered in plastic. <laughs> so well done, Clinton. And in the slightly altered words of Napoleon Dynamite, ever take your couch off some sweet jumps? Gosh! <laughs> Still to come, Rupert Murdoch reveals why he likes to meddle in politics. Oh, uh, just to make it difficult. <laughs> Ricky Ponting is asked how Shane Warne will react to the female members of the Barmy Army. He's ready. And George announces a new visit to Washington by John and Jeanette. I wish I could tell the American people, don't worry about it. They're not coming again, but they are coming again. Please welcome David Kosh and Georgie Parker. Our favourite mover and shaker this week is former Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser, who's warned that next year's federal election could be the Muslim election, as the government continues to ramp up the fear of Islam. In fact, the Federation of Islamic Councils is so worried about a scare campaign, they're planning their own series of ads. Islam is good. <laughs> Why are we distracted by this Muslim rubbish anyway? Anyone would think there'd been an interest rate rise. <laughs> Let's be clear. There are stupid Muslims who hate women and want to destroy the West. There are also stupid Christians who hate homosexuals and want to bomb abortion clinics. Stupid Jews who hate the Arab world and want to fix it with nuclear weapons. And stupid Buddhists who get drunk on wine laced with toads and pass out naked in the street. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the faithful, be afraid of the idiots. <laughs> and we're back to the Howard government. <laughs> I'm Will Anderson. Koshi, <laughs> you're a news hawk. Are the Muslims going to be halal scapegoats? Uh, well, unfortunately, I'm, 
I think they probably will. <laughs> in our family, my second oldest daughter has been going out with a, a terrific Sri Lankan guy for the last two years, plays in the family basketball yeah. team, stuff like that. Every time we go to the airport, sure. he's the one that gets pulled wait, over. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, family basketball team? <laughs> What are you, the Partridge family? No. no, no you got no, a little no. band going? No. no. Hello, no. we're the costumes. <laughs> the Reservoir Dogs. The Reservoir Dogs. And CJ. CJ is, uh, yeah. gets pulled over all the time. And he goes out for a drink somewhere and some guy says, you know, go back to where you came from, we hate Muslims. Well, CJ is... A Christian Sri Lankan who was born yeah. here. Sure. And, we didn't, have, and it's we didn't have that. Annoys me. You know, ten years ago we were much more tolerant than we are today. It's crazy. And yeah. I, I mean, I even hate the word tolerant because it means that you're putting up with something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. we accept it because Australia has always been multicultural. Yeah, exactly. It's not a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. For generations. <laughs> Multiculturalism has worked better here than anywhere yeah, else. And I think well, you, you need are. more than one god, I reckon. You know, you need different gods. If you only had one, they'd get well, lazy, a, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you need them to be competing oh, against each other. Yeah. 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 You've got to keep them honest. <laughs> Although, could we stop killing each other over whether your imaginary friend is better than their imaginary friend? <laughs> That's the thing, like, to say that it's, it's Muslim people, it's just being yeah. deeply, deeply racist. Well, yeah. politicians use fear. That's what the, the point yeah. of it is. Mm. Even if they don't believe it, this yeah. is the thing that it hurts me most, is that they will use it. Smart people. And you've got to say, John Howard's a smart person, right? Yeah, he's a Bronwyn smart Bishop is a smart person. Bronwyn Bishop said that the hajib that Muslim women wear on their heads made them look ridiculous. Bronwyn Bishop! <laughs> what about the ridiculous thing on top of her? looks at Bronwyn and Bishop and goes, what's going on with your hair? But I was just going to say that, you know, a, a government inspires fear to make us feel like we need that government more. Yeah. I mean, isn't that kind yeah. of the... Well, that's what you do in lieu of having a decent policy. <clears throat> well, yeah, they... How do you spell that? <laughs> well, because, because it works in America. Yeah. George Bush does it, so Bonsai back here does it here in Australia. Bonsai! There's a small, small There's Bush. A small bush. <laughs> the big issues are for you, Georgie? Like, what would make you, like, like, vote one way or the other in an election? There's a tonal quality to our country at the moment that, that I think is excessively dangerous. And it just seems to have slipped under the radar and so many lies have just been covered up and... Yeah. I mean, he's a very clever politician and, and therefore a very dangerous one and I don't think he encourages us to be the best country and the best people that we can be. But no. he's like he'll never admit he's wrong, but... <laughs> OK, I'll... I'll go the other way. It's almost full employment, economy looks good, and I reckon we have a generation of sort of under 30s, under 25s, who have a great set of values that go quite against what John Howard's on about. Mm. And, and for me, yeah. for me, I reckon that's the really heartening thing. It's grassroots, it's driven by a younger generation Australian who has much better values than their parents. Yeah. Right. Uh, really, no, I really believe that. Really believe that. What I love is the two most sensible things that have ever been said on this show we saved for the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Georgie Barker and David Cox! Now, the nominees for Outstanding Excellence in Politics are... Holy Health Minister Tony Abbott for claiming stem cell research would lead to hybrid mu mutants, much like this. <laughs> George W. Bush, by far the most erudite of the dwarves. Obviously, the violence in Baghdad is uh, still terrible. A tragic occasion when innocent people are, uh, are killed. <laughs> Attorney General Philip Ruddock, who reckons sleep deprivation isn't torture. Well, one thing I don't do is offer legal opinions. <laughs> well, it's hard when you don't seem to know anything about the law. And Kim Beasley for leading a party in a poll-winning position and still consistently reaching a level of popularity just below that of Stingrays. Well, that's not good enough. And the 
the excellent winner is... Is... The Bomber, Kim Beasley! Hey! Now, unfortunately, Kim doesn't know where he is tonight, but we did speak to him earlier. Mr Beasley, should we be worried you keep getting people's names wrong? Yeah, this is the problem that John Howard has. You just called yourself John Howard. So if he changed, I would be delighted. Why would he change? He was called John Howard before you were. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No one knows what you're talking about. And the fact that they have that perception means that we're going to win. Who? The two John Howards? Kim Beasley, you're a weirdo. And the public understands this. entertaining rogues making news this year. Would you like to bone a friend? <laughs> oh, I'd just like to say that Eddie Maguire is a great man, all right? And, um, <laughs> it's a great network and I'm welcome there at any time. <laughs> you desperate, desperate whore. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, you want to get paid, that gives you some respect. <laughs> uh, why not? Good on Channel 9. We'd be great on that station, I reckon. I think it'd Just be after you in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Way, way after me. I'm fine right now. <laughs> and Corinne, come on. I would, I would do a great job on an ad cruncher if you need anyone to sell those. <laughs> <laughs> come on, get down and give me 50. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get the job. <laughs> Revealed. John Howard's mole inside the ABC. That would be... That would be a very frightening episode of Play School, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, this very man. I don't even know all the words. Ugh, Jeanette. Ugh, need help. Ugh. I'm looking that way tonight. I'm looking that way. Why are you refusing to look at me? Because I'm looking that way. Because somebody told me. I got an email this week. They said, you always look that way, look that way. So I'm looking that way. Whoever that you it? are who sent me that, looking at you. <laughs> looking at you. Do you know what that bear is saying? I reckon he's saying... Because of the AWB, we're both stuffed. <laughs> oh, that's scary. Do you recognise that photo, uh, Kerry Ann? Haven't, I haven't seen the dolphin in years. <laughs> All I've got to ask is, Kerry Ann, where's its dorsal fin? <laughs> Happiest dolphin I have ever seen. And Corinne, you're going to love this because that dolphin is still alive and well. Oh. She is still up in Queensland. Yeah, she'd be living on the So that's girl it on is girl, girl action. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dor <laughs> dorsal fin too. Uh, but she <laughs> is happy as Larry, except when I met her, she actually has warts on her nose and one of us hasn't aged well. Oh. How do you know this? She's, She's got warts yet. on her nose. She d She's Has she been about... brown nosing George Bush yeah. as well? <laughs> No, she was the first dolphin. I was, I remember that photograph. I was working for Channel 9 in Brisbane. I was 16 years old. What the hell were you doing at Channel 9 then? I started work then when I was 13. You think I have left? Um, what were you doing? I had a kid show. You're doing show the weather I... like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was 13 when I started a kid show. I was about 15 or 16 doing an afternoon kid show. We went down to SeaWorld. That was the, why we... I can't remember why we did that. Because the dolphin is still there yeah. at SeaWorld. Yeah. And she grandmothers all the other dolphins. And as yeah, I said, she's enough. got warts, yeah, one of us doesn't. <laughs> she needs to hear about the warts. No one knew about the warts. Yeah. Yeah. But she's a gorgeous girl. Yeah, but she thinks you're a bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of us had more work. <laughs> But you can both balance balls on your nose. <laughs> so... well, as, as 
I said, as I said, I have been working for Channel 9 since I was 13. <laughs> It's a great accessory, though, isn't it? What? A dolphin. <laughs> it's like... It's not handbag. I'm, I take a dolphin. No, just, you always make an entrance if you rock up on a dolphin. <laughs> exactly, or a zebra. I always wanted to ride on a stage in a, on a zebra. No. Like, you don't need to do anything after that. No. You arrived on a zebra. No. I, I think that's how Carrie Ann came to Earth. That's how I imagine. <laughs> So I imagine you coming to Earth. You're like an episode. You're like Free Willy on acid. It's like I love what you do. God, you know, like it's hot. It's really hot. <laughs> Thank you. Am I picking up that you might have a bit of a crush on uh, the Grand Lady of Australian Television? Don't embarrass either of us. We talk about this <laughs> off air, but yeah. Yeah, you're a muso. <laughs> You don't work during the day, do you? What do you do? You watch TV and That's do you wear what? pants? <laughs> oh, this day, I'm, I'm, I'm owning up now. <laughs> well, I can. I will, I will be way. your dolphin. <laughs> as long as you put your dorsal fin away. <laughs> I can't speak for my dorsal fin. So do you like, would you like us to leave Pinky? <laughs> <laughs> so is chucking a banana and stuff. Like, that's not cool. Like, who threw the banana at you? Do you remember that? What See banana? The, See what, the cool what, what the I hope it's a banana. I hope it's nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just somebody off out of the edge of the photo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's Eddie Maguire. No. <laughs> standing there. <laughs> Kerri-Ann and Pinky! <laughs> well, Pinky, the nominees for Outstanding Excellence in Entertainment are... The Big Brother Bogans, who gave Australian TV turkey slapping, and family first, something else to whinge about. You guys are mean to me. <laughs> That's funny though. You're yeah. mean. <laughs> Tom, Katie, and strangely Harry Suri, who came out asking when the wedding was. <laughs> George Michael, who says smoking cannabis keeps him sane and happy. <laughs> like this. And Keith Richards, who says. He's a changed man after his brush with death earlier this year, and there's something in Keith's words for all of us. I guess what I've learned from this is don't sit in trees anymore. <laughs> and the excellent winner is... Keith Richards. <laughs> Keith couldn't be here tonight, but to accept the award, his very, very, very good friend, Carrie Ann Kennelly. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. It, it is a very great honour to accept uh, this award for someone who couldn't be bothered turning up. <laughs> uh, but we all know what a joy it is. We all, well, we all know what a joy it is. We to know be what a joy it is. To be recognised for our work, but. I do think we should spare a thought for those people who have never been honoured with an award like this or something even simpler like a gold Logie. <laughs> Any Logie. <laughs> people who just keep working at the cutting edge of Australian television without a trace of resentment. <laughs> that no one has ever had the common decency just to toss him a strange-looking medal on a bit of plank? Nothing! <laughs> but it's for those people, this award, for the hard-working, talented, well-loved. <laughs> really loved. So well-loved. <laughs> loved. Baby. 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 You know to say? For the well love overlooked people, I accept this award. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Later in the glass house, the Prime Minister admits in 10 years he's yet to find the President's clitoris. It's um, a difficult region. <laughs> Now, if you can't go to sleep without worrying that evil will corrupt your children, worry no more. Now they can wear the Armour of God pyjamas. <laughs> Armour of God PJs are a response to Satan's PJs, which have the special quick opening panels for access to the devil's playground. <laughs> Fiona, your kids scare the hell out of you. Do they go to church? Yeah, look, we do take them to... Look, this happened a couple of weeks ago. We got a new... Um, World Vision baby from Africa, because the last what one shat us. <laughs> <laughs> you traded yours in. <laughs> how, did that, how, how did that phone call go? No, that's not true. The last one grew up, so we got a new one, right? right. So I put the picture of the new one on the fridge, so anyone who yeah. comes into the house will think I'm a saint. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was a couple of days after that, we're all in the car and taking the kids to mass. Yeah. Right? And my youngest is evil. Um, <laughs> no, she is, because she was born really pretty and we gave her anything it wanted and now yeah. it's nine and we have to keep it and we can't give it back. <laughs> anyway, so she's sitting in the back of the car, I kid you not, she goes like this, we're on our way to Mass and she just lost her mind and she goes, I wish I was from Africa! <laughs> and we turn around, yes. what? And she said, because then I wouldn't have to say thank you to God for anything because he wouldn't have given me anything <laughs> and I could sleep in on Sundays! <laughs> Does she go to Sunday school? No, just the... I don't know that we'll be letting her leave the house. <laughs> I, used to, I was religious as a child, yeah. yeah. I was, yeah. It's surprising, but I was. I used to pray. I used to pray. I really did. I how how old were you doing that? Up until probably 11 or 12. Yeah, I used right. to pray. Pray that I would get famous and have a hot girlfriend. And, uh... <laughs> what? Yeah! Oh, it did work. I, um, I, was, I was a Sunday school teacher. My God! <laughs> wow! Why is everyone so shocked by that? It was in Africa, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's why all those kids need sponsoring now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you, Arch? Well, I wasn't that religious growing up, but my, most of my experience with religion was through the holidays. Yeah. I just went along with it because you could get stuff. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I never really understood it as a kid. Like Easter, it's like, all right, kids, today's the day our Lord, Savior, Jesus. Rose from the dead, okay? Now go find the chocolate eggs that the big magic bunny hid. <laughs> uh, okay. Even as an adult, I don't get all the holidays. Like, I, I celebrate Christmas, but I'm still trying to, like, figure it out. It's like, I understand Jesus was born on Christmas. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is right. So Christmas is technically Jesus' birthday. Yes. So then I'm like... So I gotta buy freaking everybody a present? Because <laughs> usually it's just the one guy. You know, I think there's been a very expensive misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get kids in interested in religion, you gotta put it into terms that they understand. Right. I'm excited, and that's not that hard to do, but you gotta, okay. like, ins you, instead of, like, taking them to a Bible class, make, like, you know, a religious cereal or something, like, you know, like, <laughs> Jesus Crunch. You know, <laughs> toasted oat cereal with new fruity disciples. <laughs> mm, lemony Luke. <laughs> mm, strawberry Peter. <laughs> oh, pruny Judas. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a bumper sticker the other day. It just said, I think it was in reference to the war. It said, "Who would Jesus bomb?" <laughs> I was like, uh, Rome. <laughs> I remember about church though is when I was old enough to think like that is just sitting there just checking out all the chicks who you'd you wanted to root. Chicks. You know? <laughs> it's like, that was... Well that's what happens. That's what humans do. They That's not what, what Jesus did. Oh Jesus probably didn't he? Did I'm fairly sure? sure Jesus didn't go check out Mary Magdalene. She is hot. No, and I hear a whore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jesus did that. Uh, well the Jesus oh, I know did. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Fiona and I. Come here, Charlie. <clears throat>
The nominees for Outstanding Excellence in Religion are... The nun in Sicily who set fire to her priest lover's house after finding him in bed with a married woman. <laughs> Pope Benedict, who loved his neighbor by quoting a medieval emperor who said the Prophet Muhammad's teachings were evil and inhuman. <laughs> The American Christian group who thinks hello is a satanic word and wants it replaced with heaven-o. And the Buddhist monk in Cambodia who was defrocked for running through the streets naked after a night drinking rice wine laced with toads. And the excellent winner is... Art. Oh yeah, thank you so much. I'm very excited. I'm here tonight not just to accept this award on behalf of the American Christian group, but also on behalf of God himself. Uh, God, God couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he rang me yesterday, said he couldn't make it, asked could he send his son Jesus. I said, but surely God that would mean you'd be there, because you are Jesus and he is you and the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three, the Trinity. <laughs> and God said, look, I'll be honest with you, mate, I've never really understood that. <laughs> I think St Peter was on some pretty weird shit at that time. <laughs> God can't be here, Jesus can't be here, there's a few gods who can't be here. Uh, Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, can't be here. Very busy around the world at the moment, Shiva. Um, ironically, mainly busy in countries where no one believes in Shiva. <laughs> They believe that their God is the God of compassion and infinite love so much that if you believe your God is the God of infinite compassion, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> uh, thankfully, tonight we do have some gods here. Muhammad is here. It's great to have him here. Of course, we can't show you his face on television. It turns out all this time he's been a dentist. Very weird. Uh, I'm also accepting this on behalf of the American Christian Association and, and the dictionary in question who've agreed to change hello to heaven oh. They've also agreed to remove the word sin from singing. <laughs> singing will now be living a full and fruitful life through our Lord Jesus Christ, ging. <laughs> and after continued lobbying from all of the Australian media, including everyone who's ever worked with the guy, the phrase country music will now be known as Kyle Sandilands re music. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Stuff you won't see in the glass house. Kim Beasley justifies his passion for photocopying his ass. In many ways, my most important blueprint. <laughs> to present the most coveted award of the night, which this week is called... And the nominees for the 2006 Golden Cretan are Mel Gibson for filling his bloodstream with tequila and the world with Christian love. <laughs> Harpy, in Greek legend, a rapacious and filthy monster having a woman's head and a bird's body. In England, Jermaine Greer. <laughs> North Korean leader Kim Jong-il, in a year when the true nutbag leaders of the world were relatively quiet, Jong-y really stepped up by exploding a bomb that may or may not have been nuclear, may or may not have worked properly, and may or may not have been one of Saddam's WMDs. <laughs> and today, tonight's Naomi Robson for a khaki frock, a lizard on her shoulder and a tribe of non-existent cannibals. <laughs> have you rescued Wawa yet, Nene? I'm guessing the answer to that is no. <laughs> and the 2006 Glasshouse Golden Cretan is... <laughs> Mr Mel Gibson! <laughs> We're humbled to actually have him here with us tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mel Gibson! Hey, 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 uh, hey, hey. How are you, Mel? Oh, I gotta stop drinking. <laughs> I look shit out. <laughs> and I need to wee. <laughs> Ooh. 
that, is this a, an honour for you to win this award? It is an honour, yeah. I hope to win it again next year, yeah. <laughs> really? Well, we're, yeah. Not, we're not on air next year? We're not on air. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Surely if I can make a comeback, you can do. <laughs> Have you got any words of advice for Michael Richards, Kramer? Yeah, thanks for speaking. <laughs> well, it took the heat off me, didn't it? Now, we know that you're, um, you know, you've made The Passion of the Christ. What, what movies are you thinking about making next? Um, I'm thinking about making... Uh, <laughs> mad... Mal... Mad Mal. <laughs> it's going to be a reality show. <laughs> You reckon you're wacky, Borat? Why do I get going? <laughs> Look now, aren't the Jews really responsible for all the wars in the world, Mel? Oh no, but they did come up with the idea of cutting off me foreskin, and uh... <laughs> hey, oh, that's not pretty downstairs, I can tell you. <laughs> that's no longer a lethal weapon. <laughs> Is, is there any way you think you could make amends for what you did to the Jewish people? Yeah, of course there is. I could, uh, what could I do? I oh, know. I can wear one of these. <laughs> <laughs> now, has, has there been any uh, upside to wearing the yarmulke? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, there's been a little bit, a lot of downside though. What's that? I'm getting horribly sunburnt. <laughs> Bloody covering my ears, I can tell you. <laughs> well, Mel, it seems like we have uh, a guest here. It's uh, it's Naomi Robson. Oh my God. Naomi, Naomi uh, this, is a, this is a bit of a shock. You actually didn't win this award. No, troubling times. <laughs> troubling times. I didn't win the award, but uh, now that I've left Channel Seven, I thought, what the hell? May as well uh, have a look around. Say hi to Mel, old friend of mine. Yeah, you're hot. I'll put you in one of my movies. Do you want to be in one of my movies? Well, I was actually planning on starring in my own movie. I was going to do a remake of uh, uh, my friend Flicker. <laughs> I'm going to play Flicker. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Troubling times. You got, you're going to play a horse. Well, I am quite horsey. <laughs> uh, certainly. Do you have any other plans for your retirement? Uh, Hello. Oh, I, I have a few goals. Uh -huh. And I was thinking of eating Wawa. <laughs> <laughs> Troubling times. <laughs> I <laughs> know, what, what is with the, the lizard? You got in a lot of trouble about the, the lizard. Is, you, you've taken to wearing it all the time now? I have. It's me. He's my only friend. <laughs> my only friend. And I've, I've super glued him to my chest. <laughs> <laughs> we talk, don't we? <laughs> Do you want to come drinking with me, Naomi? Sure, I'll let you ride me to the pub. <laughs> I drink like a lizard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mel Gibson and Naomi Robson. way it is for the glass house before we go we want to say a heartfelt thank you to all the people who tuned in every week just so they could write the angry letters that brought us so much joy <laughs> we'd also like to say we're sincerely sorry for every single person or institution we've offended but we're not <laughs> in fact we're quite proud of it <laughs> If we weren't offending people, we wouldn't be doing our job. And as of tomorrow, we won't be doing our job. But we'll still be offending people, just more privately. I hope we said some stuff that needed to be said. We also said a lot of stuff that didn't need to be said. But in the words of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, fuck them if they can't take a joke. And let's take a look at tomorrow's headlines. According to the Territory News, Chappelle Corby's book causes more trouble. Printed on telehose. <laughs> Le Monde claims a Russian spy drank tiny nuclear bomb in sushi bar. X-ray shows shiitake mushroom cloud. <laughs> in the West Australian, Beasley demands exit strategy. Have you tried the door marked exit? Asked helpful KFC staff. 
In the New York Post, police kill man on wedding day. Yasmin lucks out again. <laughs> From the age, Brax, Howard won election for me. Howard, thought I was SMSing Australian Idol. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the last time, Dave Hughes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Corinne Gray!